the Blaring Out with Eric Blair Show, and tonight we're here at the premiere for The Runaways, a music-fueled, coming-of-age story about the groundbreaking, all-girls, 70s rock group. You lived this. I lived it. I was there when they got together, and, and they used to hang out at my club. And the they Roddy's English Disco, so much rock and roll history occurred in your club. Yeah, and it's featured in them. Have you seen the film? No, I want oh, to. you got to see it. And yeah, they recreate the original English disco in, in the film and, and playing the music I was playing and everything and Joan and Cherie hanging out in there and Christian now, Hurst and Dakota what, Panny. That place was illustrious for like Robert Plant hung out there, mm -hmm. uh, Roxy Music, whoever was in town that, at that, around that period, David Bowie. T-Rex, yeah. Susie Quattro. And then uh, Iggy Pop played at the Iggy club. Pop, yeah, he did that Z Nazi thing where right. he got hit with the bell. And, and uh, cut himself with yeah. a razor blade. And Zolar X they had yeah. space suits with little antennas and the Imperial Dogs. And that so, was exciting. And they reopened again in the same location. Are you we, serious? We hearing about that, yeah. What now? As an art project, oh. it's an art gallery now. Oh, okay. But we're going to do a night of a club there. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Who now, when the Runaways finally hit their stride, who were some of the people that they would hang out with at your club? Darby Crash. Dar Darby was allowed in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, they hung out, and of course, Joan was really into Susie Quattro. And yeah. When Susie came there, you know, Joan used to kind of like follow Susie around a little bit. How um, much? How much time? How many scenes are in your English disco in the movie? I think they show it twice. Yeah, twice. And then I'm in the movie at the end when um, Joan comes back on my radio show as a solo artist. And we're promoting uh, I Love Rock and Roll. Marie, how exciting and surreal is this for you tonight? Oh my gosh. Well, that's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, I've always wanted the girls to, to get the recognition that, that they deserved all those years ago. And I was always there. I was at every single show. And now to see this, is, is, it's absolutely surreal. And I think it's amazing that Elvis' granddaughter is playing you in the movie. I mean, how awesome is that? Is that amazing? And the most amazing thing is she was friends, close friends, with my son Trevor. Uh, and when I told Trevor who was playing me, I had no idea that they were close friends. So it's 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 uh, it's kind of one of those weird things. Now yeah. you actually did an album with your sister in at the early '80s, correct? We did. Messing with the boys with yeah. Capitol Records. And you guys were actually on Bowser's show. What was it called? Oh, uh, Shanana. Shanana. Oh, did we love that? We had a blast. And how long, how long did that run for? Did you did your gig with her run? Oh, uh, yeah, about about a year and a half. And then I burned out. It wasn't, it wasn't for me, you see. Yeah. I wished it had been. I wished I was like my sister. But I had to finally understand that I, I'm not a Cherie Curry. I'm Marie Curry. So. Lastly, what do you think the legacy is that the Runaways leave behind? Well, I think it tells women that they could do absolutely anything that they want. And that's, that's the important thing, don't you think? You know? you know, it's not all a man's world. And especially at the ages of 15. That was a lot of pressure, I think, for your sister at that time to be dealing with the, the machine, as I call it, in the music business, don't you think? It was, and it definitely took its toll, as, as you'll see in the film, because in the film is exactly what happened. You know? and you've seen the film already. I have. You went to Sundance. I loved it. Nice. I loved it. And I hear that they've actually changed it up a little tad, so I think it's actually, well, from what Cherie says, it's even better. So I can't wait to see it. Great. And what would you say about Dakota's, Dakota Fanning's performance as your sister, Cherie Curry? I got to tell you guys, I cried because uh, not that I wanted to relive some of the bad things, but to see Dakota up there, I, I've always thought she was the best actress I ever knew. I mean, since she was a little wee one. But uh, she portrayed my sister to AT and sang her butt off, too. Kim, this must be amazing for you. That's interesting. Kim, there, there's a rumor that you weren't actually allowed on the set. I wasn't. Now, why is that? Because I'm too beautiful and talented and I would have disrupted everything. You think that they would have came to you for advice on the character? None. None. Michael Shannon and I met at Denny's. And you think he's the next Christopher Walken? He is the next. It's not me. He's doing Martin Scorsese's next project. How true to what you live do you think this movie is? It's all fantasy. The reality would never get on the screen. Yeah, I noticed some things were, were, were snipped a little bit. A little... Uh, right. I know what happened. So do you. Why do you think that originally the Runaways gelled so well together but then broke up? That's the way God planned it. You're happy with the way things turned out? Yes, I am. 
I belong to me and I'm in love with myself. You've always had a great love for yourself, Kim, over the years. It's never gone. I know that's why I'll never betray myself. I'll never cheat on me. Hi, I'm Robin Matthews, the makeup department head and makeup designer for The Runaways. How did you do the research to find out what the makeup looks were? I had a great team of makeup artists that did a ton of research. Floria Sigmondi, the director, already had a ton of research already done. So we collected nearly 5,000 photos of The Runaways in the time period, as well as you know concert footage and live footage from Joan Jett and Shri Curry. We created every single look in the movie, even the background artists are just from real photos that we found of the runaways. So they were really the designers, actually, not me. <laughs> what was your favorite look in the movie? Jones is completely iconic. She figured out how to rock a black smoky eye early on, and, and she still does it to this day better than anyone else in the world. You know, that was 20 years ago. There's not many people that can wear the same look from 20 years ago that still looks amazing. But Cherie Curry rocked a smoky eye that nobody else ever did before. She came up with crazy colors and Probably her look with the silver glitter disco ball eye is one of my favorites. <laughs> Nancy Wilson of Heart. How you doing, sister? I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. What is your connection with the Runaways? Were they an inspiration to you and Anne? Oh, they were always great. You know, we were among the few kind of women rockers out there at about, about the same time as them. And, you know, we had I always have respect for anybody that kind of survives that stuff. So. You know, we survived it too in our own way, and it's really exciting. The movie sounds great. So, have you ever had a chance to hang out with Joan Jett? We actually tour with Joan about you know once a year. We bump into her at a big county fair somewhere, and uh, she's always great. You know, it's just as good as ever. Hannah Marks. I was in the movie Accepted. I did some stuff on Weeds and Flash Forward. Sweet. Yeah. Now, what brings you out here to the premiere of The Runaways? I'm in the movie. I play Tammy. and oh, the groupie. Yeah, the groupie. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I have a really big crush on Joan in it. <laughs> we do share a kiss in the very beginning, but it's very innocent and... I think it's pretty cute, but we're kind of intoxicated. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So it was Tammy an actual character, or are you kind of like a culmination of a lot of characters that were groupies? I, I was told she was a combination of a lot of different people, but I'm not really sure who. So I just had to kind of have my own interpretation of her. What was it like working with such great actresses as Dakota Fanny and Kristen Stewart? It was a dream. They're so amazingly talented. I couldn't have wished to work with a better cast. They're my idols. <laughs> and Stella Maeve, you play Sandy West, the drummer for the Runaways. The girl with the perfect timing that said said to Kim Fowley, Joan Jett's got incredible timing. Let's rock with her. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what was it like <laughs> for you to embody this legendary rock star? So hard. And I, and I hope I did. I, I, I practiced every day, my walk, my talk, how I held things, what I did. I mean, I got it down to how she held her stick when she drummed, you know. It was really difficult, and, and I can only pray that I did it justice. Hey, look, I've seen a lot of scenes from the movie, and it looks like you've done some great justice, Thank too. Thank you. You know, I got a lot of slack for it. You know, people didn't think I could do it. I'm smaller, I'm little, you know, whatnot, but I, I think I brought it out. Yeah, and, then, and then we know that Sandy West passed a few years ago, and what kind of research went into that? Well, that made it ten times harder because, you know, everybody else was here. Uh, thank God Joan was on set and Cherie to answer all my questions. Um, I spoke with Sandy's mom, her two sisters, and her best friend is my date tonight. I don't know where she is, but she's here somewhere. Um, and, you know, spent a lot of time with them, answered any questions that, I, I mean, they answered any questions that I had, told me all sorts of things, research online, you know, uh, finding out whatever I could get my hands on. You guys actually became a band. Absolutely. Absolutely, without a doubt. Now, did you play drums beforehand? Yes, I played drums since I was 12. Uh, my dad was in a band in the 1980s and played with like Billy Idol, so he taught me since I was like 12. Your dad played with Billy Idol? He did play with him, once. What was it like working with Dakota and Kristen? And what did you learn from them? I learned so much. They're, they're two wonderful film actresses. Um, it was great to work with them. Everybody had a really good time. Everybody was more than generous. We all had a lot of fun, man. And what did you love most about the 1970s? What did, what did you love? Real. I mean, what a great era. You know, we, we live in the thousands. I mean, you know, hey, I'm hoping things will change. But 1970s, that was it, man. That was great. Scout Taylor Compton, yes. Lita Ford, yes. the rocker, the lead guitar yes. player in The Runaway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What did you do to get into your role? Did you get to hang out with Lita at all? I actually got to meet Lita after the film.
I went up to see her show. She called me one day and she's like, yo, it's Lita. I'm like, no, yeah, right, whatever. She's like, no, dude, it's Lita. I want you to come see my show. And I hung out with her for two hours and then I'm going to see her next weekend. She called me up. I'm going to go see her next weekend. It's amazing. So how close was your depiction of Lita after meeting her? Did you think, wow, I nailed it? Um, well, I did a lot of research before the film. I watched a lot of uh, Lita Ford DVDs, a lot of um, the Runaways YouTube videos, and Joan and Cherie were there all, all, all the time, so we kind of got some feedback from them. What did you learn about that period of rock and roll? Was there anything surprising that you learned about that 70s period? And it was all about sex, drinking, and rock and roll. <laughs> it was a party town. Um, no, we learned a lot of stuff, especially from Joan telling us stories and stuff. It was really cool. Yeah, what was the highlight of making the movie for you? I'm um, working with the girls and forming a band. Like we had rehearsal for a month straight and during the film, and then we broke up at the end. Like it was over. So it was kind of like our band just broke up. It was really depressing and sad. This is the blaring out with Eric Blair show, and tonight we are here at the premiere for The Runaways, the music fueled coming of age story about the groundbreaking all girls '70s rock group. The Blaring Out Show.